What up, y'all? Real quick, before we start the episode, I want to apologize. We had a little bit of background noise on this episode. The homies were watching the Western Conference Finals in the other room. Shit got rowdy. So you can hear it a little bit. Not too bad, but either way, just want to apologize. With that said, you guys are in for a treat. Really dope episode featuring my boy, Jimmy Shagra Jr. He has a lot of intense stories that he shares with us, mostly revolving around his uh, father, who back in the 70s was accused and acquitted of hiring someone to murder a high-level judge. And actually, the person that was hired to actually murder the judge and who murdered the judge is actually the father of actor Woody Harrelson, which is even crazier. Shit gets really deep. His father's mostly known for being a marijuana kingpin again back in the 70s. Again, well, the main reason we did this is because there was a recent story done about his father and related events on a news, uh, local news channel. So I just thought it'd be dope if we got his perspective. And of course, uh, this is his perspective, of course, there's going to be some bias. You can even hear my bias creep in there a little bit. So uh, at the end of the day, it's an amazing story, and I encourage you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. With that said, let's jump into the episode. Sweet Jesus Radio. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Sweet Jesus Radio. What's up, what's up, what's up? Big shout out and thank you to all the listeners. Thank you for, or thank you to everybody rocking the shirts, everybody spreading the word. Tonight, have a very special guest in the house. I want to welcome to the show my homie Jimmy Shagra. What's going on, Jesus? What's up, bud? Chilling. How's your day so far, man? Good, good, you know. So I uh, went to work and make sure you talk directly into the mic a little bit. Not like you don't have to be super close, but just like pointed that way. <laughs> I'll try my best. I'll Not, try my I, best. See, that sounded good. You see, can you hear it in the, cool, in the cool. headphones? Cool, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, man. Just you know, had work and uh, now I'm here and ready just do this. Do Hell this yeah, thing man! Well, thanks for coming through, man. Anytime. Brother. Again, you you are uh, you uh, reached out, you know, as far as the story series, but then at the same time, you know, we wanted to get into some other stuff too, which we'll talk about in a bit. But you know, just so some of the people that don't know you. Maybe get some of the listeners uh, help them to get to know you a little bit. You know, I know you just came back from a poker tournament and shit, right? Into the Mountain Gods. Yeah, is it cool to talk about that, or yeah, is that the no, other no, your no, double no, life? No, no, it's the double like, 07 it's, shit. It's totally cool, man. Uh, I went up there, uh, played the tournament. It's a two day thing, and I was actually uh, going. I was chip leader going into the second day, and uh, I was just so excited about that that I, I just let it get to my head. And uh, you know, chip leader in a poker tournament really isn't anything you know what i mean yeah. at the end of the day so you know uh, it is what it is and the cards came out the way they came and so i ended up busting out on the second day but for it being my first time entering the the tournament i was uh definitely satisfied with my with oh my yeah man give us some of the details just for the people like me that don't know <laughs> shit as far as like how do those work how many yeah. people are involved uh, in there's shit? about 100 people give or take you know what i mean everyone puts in like about you know, 350 bucks and then you know to just start whittling them down to the end and the last 10 people at the table will just split up the money you know what I mean all right, all right, all right. yeah because I've seen your pictures man with your chips yeah dude boom, man boom, sometimes boom. I'll be on it dude and it just happens and then it, I mean it's cards man one wrong move and it is what yeah. it is you know, you see, you'll see all your all your chips just go to someone else and <laughs> you just gotta deal with it you know what I mean <laughs> how long you been doing that shit for uh, dude I've been playing cards for a while man it's, yeah. it's, it's really interesting to me just uh, you're just kind of like fighting people uh, mentally and strategically yeah. for for money, mind man. games. Yeah, huh? it's such a mind game. It's it's oh, it's hey. pretty cool, man. Shit, I mean, I know you. I don't know you. Just you know, so the listeners know, I know you, but I don't know you super well. But we have a lot of mutual friends, Every, shit like that. A lot, dude. I know you're a hip hop head. You know you were a skater or our skater. Uh, you gamble, you know, play some poker and shit like that. Uh, what else? Maybe some of the other things that we don't know about. Just you know, just give the people an idea. Uh, well, you know, I'm just uh, just like a kid, a dude that grew up in Central El Paso. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Learning all the same lessons that everyone else learns, and uh, dealing with a bunch of other shit that that you know comes along with uh, just life, I guess. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, shit. Well, yeah. One of the reasons I was excited to have you, or just in a way, because I had actually heard, uh, you know, on TV. They were actually talking about your family a little, man. And I was like, oh, man, that's Jimmy's family. 
You know, it's coming out on the news again and shit. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, man. I mean, every once in a while, uh, you know, someone uh, does something or, or, you know, for some reason it comes out again in the in the, the spotlight or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I guess uh, from what I can see, uh, what ha- basically all of the dudes that used to uh, work for my father or with him, how it depends on how you see it, uh, got together and they wrote a book about one of the first uh, smuggles that my dad did. The, the, oh, one of the first big ones from Colombia. Do you want to give a little bit of background? Uh, yeah. yeah, my dad was uh, convicted of being a drug kingpin under the Criminal Kingpin Act. And uh, basically, he was a marijuana smuggler, man. Word, word. Yeah, yeah. That's that's some of the little that I know. Uh, he just took it to, you know, he stopped going to Mexico and went down to Colombia. And, uh, you know, he just, his ambition was uh, bigger than... Well, he just took it to a whole other level. Yeah. He just took it to a whole other level. You know what I mean? That that can happen. That's for sure. Hell yeah. Shit, man. Well, I mean, I know, like I said, it's the story series. So we definitely want to talk about, you know, let you, you know, basically shed some light on that as well. But we also want to get into some of the stories and they all tie in. It all ties in. So I know one of the things that we talked about, we kind of reviewed some of the notes and whatnot. We wanted to make sure we had some good shit for the listeners and also just get you, give you a chance to... Uh, speak and say your piece uh, so you grew up in central yeah man I grew up in central with my grandma uh, on my mom's side my my father went to, uh, my, my father went to prison um, my mom went to prison and uh, after that we came to live with my grandparents all right all right all right tell me about the the worm man uh, dude the worm is like <laughs> the worm is like a legendary skate spot dude it's it's underneath the Cassidy bridge going into Fort Bliss and it's just a dirty old ditch man but but uh when you're a skating when you're well especially when you're learning to skate uh that's definitely one of the one of the places where you're gonna be hanging out a lot you know what I mean? and it just happened to be like a couple blocks from my grandma's house so so I hung out there more than more than I should have been, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like like bums live down there and they build little like communities and uh, you know we, just, we would just go down there and skate, you know what I mean? Especially back then, there wasn't all these skate parks. And yeah, shit. yeah, well, it was when skateboarding was a bad thing. Yeah, now skateboarding is a, a good cr- thing. Now it's mainstream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You want, now you want your son to be a skater. Know, come dude. on, make some money, dude. like <laughs> Tony Hawk. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, did anything, did you ever have any adventures? Did you ever have anything oh, happen man, there? there's so much, so many adventures <laughs> down there. Uh, one of the more memorable ones, uh, which kind of like shaped the whole lot of the way I look at certain shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> like we, uh, basically, we were just down there skating. Um, I think I think maybe one of my friends had like a bowl. I mean, we were just little kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like not knowing what we were doing. Uh, I think we had like a pipe made out of like nuts and bolts or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, tools. Yeah, yeah, and little and we, we were just, uh, you know, just down there skating. And uh, some cops just came down there started chasing us we ran across the freeway Damn. uh we thought we had gotten away when really they just went around and came over the bridge and, <laughs> and got us by by the sonic on dire and it was just one of the first uh one of the first times that i had like a real interaction with the with the police yeah. when um when i really didn't do nothing wrong and these dudes were just kind of like just had it in their head that we that we were bad because we were down there skating you know what i mean damn all right all right all right Shit, well, let's talk about, let's get into some of your your family stories, man. Oh, dude, man, it gets crazy, bro. I know, I know we're going to kind of be all over the place, listeners. Uh, I don't know how I'm even going to kind of present to, to this to you guys yet, how I'm going to package it and, uh, you know, unveil it. So, uh, the way we're recording it right now, we're going to just be all over the place. I might, re- might release it like that, I might not. So, let's start with, uh, with the, let's, the vacation story, the family vacation. All right, uh, well, you know, since... We were living with my grandparents, obviously, uh, but it wasn't like my parents were gone, like um, passed away or nothing. They were just, well, you know, not there. Yeah. So, so my my grandma and grandpa, I mean, uh, you know, God bless them. My grandma's still alive. My grandpa passed away, but uh, they were just like, I mean, the best people I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're old. They're my grandma and grandpa. They're not my mom and dad, but but. So every summer, uh, when it be for our family vacations, we would. Uh, go see my mom and dad in prison, you know? Yeah. And that's pretty, that's a pretty rough thing to do when you're a little kid. You know what I mean? It was me and my brother, (laughs) me and my brother and my sister, and we were little kids and we we would go visit my dad and then my mom. And yeah, it's cool. You're visiting your mom and dad, but at the same time, in about three hours, you're also going to leave without them again. And I mean, that just like destroys you when you're a kid. You know what I mean? And it, it just, you know, it was just, 
it was almost not worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at, but at the same time, you know, it was it would, you know, the hurt always lasted a lot longer than the good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, so we would do that, and then to kind of like offshoot that the shittiness of that part of the vacation, they'd always take us to Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm to try and like you know, have have us be like an actual vacation. You know what I mean? So I went to Disneyland like every summer since when I was a kid. That's some cool grandparents, man. Yeah, definitely. You know. Any uh, what would you say as far as the the, the actual Trips to Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm. Any uh, Dude, well, my, anyone stick out more than the other? Well, I mean, <laughs> well, my grandpa was cool, man. He was an old man, but he used to ride all the rides with us because my, my grandma wasn't gonna do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she would just sit in there and wait and wait. But uh, he was he was he was cool, man. He would get on the yeah. even the. I mean, we were little kids, but uh, you know the rides that we thought were crazy. He just you know he would he weren't gonna get on them alone. That's for sure. So oh, okay, okay. I mean, they did they did their. How best. were you at this? How old were you at this time? Um. You know, from I would say from about six to like fifteen. Oh, okay. So we were yeah, little kids, you know. Little, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, they they did everything that they could in their power to yeah. uh, to give us as normal a life as they could. Yeah. Uh, granted, Considering they could the, that can never really happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, man, they, they sacrificed a lot. Yeah, that's you see sure. that a lot with the the older generations, man. You know, nowadays, I don't know, <laughs> some grandparents, like, probably our age, you know, their grandparents are, <laughs> I, I don't know, if I, I don't know if I would be down to do that shit, <laughs> I'd be like, but now they're, they're a different breed, I mean, grandma, yeah. my grandma's the same, I and mean, she sacrificed everything, because, yeah, yeah. you know, my parents, you know, were doing their thing, but yeah, my grandma's like, she had to take on two kids that aren't hers, and still Dude, do all this the, shit, and no car, no nothing, like, uh, like, you know, you put, you ask yourself, like, would you do it if you were in the position? And, yeah. You know, and a I lot know, of times it's like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it CPS. Yeah, you gotta, you know, give credit. We call the orphanage. Do. Yeah. Yeah, man. Nah, but so yeah, definitely, definitely, my grandparents say, like, if anything, saved, uh, saved our lives. Me, my brother, my sister, and at oh, least yeah, they yeah. say, at least they saved us from not being split up. Yeah, know? I was about to say they kept you together. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. So then, at some point, again, not necessarily going in chronological order, but for right now, maybe. But you got into your teens. You'd go visit. You kind of noticed there was a difference how they treated. Yeah, uh, your I mean, when we're, as to when, other... you know, when you're little, you're just like little, and you do what you're told, and whatever's yeah. happening around you is happening around and you. You start and observing. Then, at yeah, some point. exactly. You yeah. start kind of checking things out, and uh, you know, I started kind of noticing that you know, instead of like one guard bringing my dad out, it would be like three, Damn. and they'd be like, uh, you know, really jumpy around him, and you know, you know, just like not, yeah. not, not like how they, how the other, and then. We'd have to go to like a special area of, of the of the prison, and you know, it just let me know that there was a difference between, um, I guess you could say, uh, the the caliber, the caliber of, of the prison, offense or, or whatever. What, you know, was... I didn't know about the offense yet. Yeah, I just knew that like, uh, you know, there was a difference. Yeah, and they were a lot more <laughs> worried about <laughs> every little move that my dad <laughs> made. Exactly, dude. A little was, jumpy, huh? Oh, uh, dude, it was it was like, it was well, it was just odd. You know what I mean? Is it was a, a surreal experience. To is say. there any one of the visiting trips that sticks out more than the others? Uh, any kind of words that maybe your dad maybe have uh, whispered in your ear or I mean, any I, conversations I, that were different? I, I guess just, you know what, man? Just keeping it real, dude. Like, since there was such minimal conversation and, and real quality uh, one-on-one interaction, yeah. all of them, man. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Like that makes every, sense. Everything, you know, every, everything that they said, they, yeah. you know, him and I mean, And then also they were, I mean, you know, I guess everyone says this about their parents or whatever, but uh, they were, you know, intellectually smart people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they weren't, so, and plus they... Weren't your average street trash. Yeah, you know, not that anyone is, or, you know, but... Nah, but, there's a bunch of fuck that shit. <laughs> hey, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but... but uh, we know some. <laughs> uh, it was, you know, it was just interesting because... Uh, they had shit to say and stories to tell that like no one can even come close to saying happened to them. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? So, and then hearing it from a first-hand perspective, it's, it, it was just really interesting, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. So you had to travel from El Paso to where? <laughs> so, uh, was that Las my, Vegas? My dad was locked up in like the middle of Arizona. Okay. A, you know, a crazy prison in the middle of Arizona out in the desert. So we used to uh, head out that way towards Phoenix and, then, and uh, you know, do that thing. And then we'd visit him for a couple of days and then 
start going up to California. My mom was in Bakersfield. Oh, okay. So at least kind of. Yeah. And then since we were uh, in Cali, that's when we do the whole Disneyland, Disneyland and not so Sea World and, you know, all the touristy shit that you're supposed to do in Cali. Yeah. Yeah. How were those road trips though? It was just you and your grandparents? And it, was, it was me and my brother. My, me and my brother were a year apart. And my sister, sister too. So yeah. it's like I guess I'm the I'm the middle child, and uh, my brother and sister were a year apart from me. So it was they were kind of crazy, man. We we would definitely be fighting in the back. <laughs> we would definitely be fighting, but at the same time, I had one of those grandmas that would, would like do that whole pinch you at church oh, thing if you were no. if you were fucking up. Yeah, that hurts, so she man. would just reach behind there and uh, you know put make things right again. You know what I mean? Damn. But yeah, I got lucky, man. My grandma was <laughs> she just it took it took we'd have to do really crazy shit for, in order for her to. It doesn't shit. Well, it, it, it was pinching, it was just more of the whole intimidation, like yeah. you know. That pinch hurts. Though. Sometimes yeah. it do hurts they know where to how to get it right under the arm, or do they know yeah. like, the right spot? Where they dude? can't see, like, the public can't see the bruise. Uh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. And so from there, it's, uh, okay. So you started kind of coming into your own, yeah, becoming you know, a man, started, a young man. I started asking questions and uh, doing, you know, doing a little research, and it's kind of funny, like what, what people would tell me. As opposed to what I would hear from my mom or dad personally, and then as opposed, uh, then as opposed to what I'd also read, you know what I mean? It's just like I've heard so many different viewpoints or perspectives of the same situation. You would say it's like who 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 should I really believe? You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like how could I not believe the people that were there? Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? So. It's just a matter of perspective and, and it's perspective and who's to who you're hearing it from. It's a know? big part of it. Yeah. Okay. So, so at some point, I mean, yeah, you're, you're becoming a teenager. Yeah. You got to find your escapes and whatnot. Dude, all, you, know. you know, all I was care, all like, well, I mean, it was just, it was just, we, you know, odd. Like it was just odd. Like you, I went, one, one time like, I went to, I went to a library and the downtown library. Me and my 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 best friend Artie, um, he like pulled out the book Thirty Dealing, and I was just like. I, I mean, I had known that there was a book, but I mean, it's just weird to like see it in a public library, you yeah. know? And that's when I realized like, well, that's, that's kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Now, now see your name whether, on there. whether the book is uh, factually accurate yeah. or not is a whole other story. But at that point, I was just like, it's just like, a trip kind of, yeah, like, kind of like, whoa. Like, what Especially the before the days of the internet. I mean, when you see it in a book, it's like, <laughs> yeah. holy shit. Yeah. That's, that's a big fucking deal. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. So, I mean, you're coming into your own... You're probably maybe you're getting into some different passions and whatnot. Do you want to talk about skateboarding, that? Skateboarding, brother. Skateboarding. skateboarding was that the escape? Skateboarding, man. Like, like I just look back now at all the literal, literally hours I spent skateboarding as a uh, as a young as a younger dude, and I just try and think like if I wasn't skating all those hours, what would I have been doing yeah. with those hours? You know what I mean? Because I mean. Uh, it's just all I did, dude. It's just all yeah. all we did. You know, me, Punch, uh, oh, Punch, the punch Angelo, man. all the old school dudes. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, just trying to get better. I never, no, never no delusions of making making it a life pro thing or whatever. Yeah. I mean, but but just uh, it's the, you still want to be dope, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> con concentrating on it enough to 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 see like definite progression and and yeah. you know just and plus it was just cool because it wasn't like cool. Yeah, it was, it was like yeah, you know, the, it, the it was culture it, shit, especially back then. Like, dude, said, it was like it was like you know, meeting up with all these other dudes that did something that that wasn't like thrown in their faces. Like, yeah. here, this is the cool thing to do. You know, it says something about someone who goes and seeks out their own passion without having someone show it to them. You know what I mean? That says yeah. a lot about a person. So, just the fact that uh, that's what I did, and then I was meeting other people at skate spots who obviously did the same thing. Because I mean, if you skateboarded back then, you were like a bad kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, like you said, now now like your parents are proud of you. Yeah, it's, mainstream, <laughs> it's like man. varsity football. You know what I mean? Is that an extreme sport, <laughs> son? Are you doing one of them extreme sports? Well, you gotta understand. Now we're the parents, not I know, me. Oh, but dude, like, well, not me either. Yeah, but, but like dude, our age, yeah. even though I still feel young, I forget that yeah. I'm. You know what I'm saying? See, and, that, that, and that's how come I like you know I can't say that uh, I, I in no way skateboard anymore and i'm not trying to front like i do but because i'm old and i, I gotta work and all that and i yeah exactly and like if i fall down it's not the same anymore it hurts now <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah. um uh you know it's just uh uh it was just it consumed every like so much of my youth man yeah skateboarding it was just it was just like what's up with the hip-hop shit man i know you're a hip-hop head dog. dude i'm a hip-hop head dude and Oh, dude, hip hop, right? 
You still like it's you, not, you stick you stick to the older shit. I, I mean, I stick to like golden era shit. I stick to hip hop, and that's when hip hop was good. And the I'm shit. not even. <laughs> I'm like trying to bite my tongue right now so hard, but anything like, you new. Don't, you any, don't like the new shit. Not <laughs> none, none of it. None of it all. None of it, dude. None of it. Well, you know what? I can't say that because I haven't joints. heard it all. I haven't heard it all. But from what I I'll hear, you people, couple, yeah. Uh, it's very little though. Rant, <laughs> ranting and raving about. Oh, no, I'm just no, like, no, yeah. they, they're it's, like, it's not bowing even, down. To this, it's not even yeah, hip hop. No. It's not hip hop. No hate on anybody, but yeah, some of the shit <laughs> that these people are. Nah, that whole mumble rap thing, I just don't get it, man. Yeah, and it's like to each his own. And I actually try to hear some of it. It's just like, but I give them props, man, for kind of making their own lane. But I just can't. I just don't dig it. I, I, I just, I, I mean, if it, I, see, and I like, I like all kinds of music. Like, so I'm not gonna. If yeah. it's good music, it's good music. Yeah. That isn't just not good music like i'm from to me personally you know it's just yeah it's what's you know we're i'll I'll just i'll leave it at where basically what i say is that we're just hey we were lucky yeah because the 90s in general man it was was like it was the best dude not just hip-hop though it's just in general that's when the skating was popping off and the hip-hop was popping up yeah grunge rock you know even though some people talk shit i like you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. You Dude, know what I, used saying? To, I used to listen to so much punk rock. I mean, yeah, just, and the punk scene was all, yeah. all that. The man. '90s is just like that late '80s, early <laughs> to mid '90s, and even the late '90s, Dude. it was just popping off. Yep. Those, yeah. Those are those are uh, as they say the good old days. The good know? old days. The, the, that's what they call <laughs> it the golden era, dog. Yeah, for sure, man. And then, uh, do you remember your first uh, poker game, man? Dude, me and my friends started playing poker, and we didn't even know what we were doing. <laughs> we, 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 we were, uh, you know, we weren't playing for money. We were just, uh, we just had chips, and we just decided that it was, since we had chips, we were gonna start playing poker. And my dad was a big gambler, but yeah. um, you know, he would. So we started playing poker, and we weren't quite aware of all the rules. And one of the biggest uh, rounds of betting, which is like the pre-flop betting, we would just like skip that and just go right to the, turning the cards over on the flop and then start making bets. Wow. And, and, and it's, it's kind of funny because it's just like not the way poker's played, but I, the way uh, since we did do it like that, I feel like it kind of helped me understand it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I would I would see where people would would have bet but didn't, and you know you just see where you got to like get people out of the pots when you have the chance and. Poker's crazy, man. It's like it's like chess, dude. <laughs> give me a give me a give me a it's crazy cr- poker story. Man. I mean, it's just some, crazy. I mean, it's just you gotta have one story where some some shit went down, dude. I mean, you know, always <laughs> having pocket aces and and getting all your money into the middle and then having that your hand be beat. That's always a, that's always gonna suck, and and that happens more often than you than than you would think it does. You know yeah. what I mean? But but if you can you can make the right play. And still lose because you can't determine those last two cards that are gonna come out. You know what I mean? So you could play perfect poker, perfect poker, and if on the river, which is the last card to come, it's that one card that that guy that the guy you're playing against needs to make his hand better than yours comes out. I mean, it just is what it is. But but it doesn't make the fact that you made the right move at the right time yeah. correct. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that sounds complicated. It man. is, dude. That's it's, it's dude. Like, you got you got to be able to. Gonna make my you got to be able to just like so, you know. I don't have the patience for that shit, dog. <laughs> do you got to have patience because yeah. you got to kind of wait to see what everybody else is doing. And I'm like, oh come on, motherfucker! I'll it's, just it's I'll all, just show my. Ass. <laughs> it's just like a, a mental thing, man. Yeah, it's mental, yeah. and that the time it goes hand in hand with the the patience. You know what I'm saying? Which I do not have. Like these motherfuckers, they play chess, Tito and dude, groups. I saw brain, that, and it's chess. like. I know how to play chess. My dad taught me at a very young age before he went to prison. Uh, and that's fucking, yeah. and uh, I know how to move him, but I just don't have the patience. Like, come on, motherfucker. I'm just attacking with my queen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm not good at it. But I like the philosophy behind it. Yeah, you know what I'm it's, 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 it's interesting. You know? Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, sure. Well, let's talk about, at some point, your grandparents basically made it illegal, right? As far as yeah, uh, so adoption, so right? I'm I'm a junior. So my dad's name is uh, Jamil Alexander Shagra. Where is that name from? Uh, Le- well, I'm Lebanese. As, as I was about to say, yeah, it's, it's, a, not, a, it's, yeah. A, it's a Middle Eastern name, so I'm, I'm Lebanese. So uh, so so I'm, you know, my name is Jamil Alexander Shagra. Do you junior. speak Spanish though? <laughs> I could speak. A You're not Paso. I, I, could, I could speak. I could speak some Spanish. I could definitely understand more than I could speak. Uh, you know, I, know you, I know you say way and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I grew. I grew up in. A, no, I grew up in a house with uh, with a, with a Mexican grandma. You know what I mean? So how are you not gonna pick up? Oh, your grandma's Mexican. Yeah, she's oh, okay, cool. So my my dad was a uh, Lebanese, uh, full blooded, and then my mom is, was uh, half Anglo Saxon oh, okay. and half Mexican. So half white and half Mexican. Wow. Okay. So. Uh, my grandma is Mexican and my grandpa was the white dude. You know what I mean? Got a little bit of everything in there, all right? Yeah, you know, a little, but uh, 
So but yeah, Chagra is Lebanese. Yeah, Chagra okay. is a Lebanese name. And, Jamil. Um, yeah, Jamil is, is as well. And I'm not really sure where Jimmy comes from, but I mean, you know. Close they, enough. Yeah, they Americanized they, they called it. They called my dad that, and so they called me that. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, I but you. Um, you know, I was uh, going to Rusk Elementary School, probably like in the second or third grade. And, and you know, um, I don't know really any kids at that at that grade who get like Fs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I know, man. It's hard to fuck that up. <laughs> I hard mean, to you fuck know, up second grade. <laughs> but um, you know, one, well, one, one, I guess, uh, report Amps card. Games. I came home with, uh, and I handed it to my grandma, and she got all upset, and and I was so young that I didn't even bother looking at it. You know what I mean? But uh, it turns out that I had uh, a bunch of Fs, and so you know, uh, a parent teacher conference is set up, and this and that, and and it turns out that. The reason that this teacher was giving me Fs and like unsatisfactory like U's, I remember it was a U for unsatisfactory. Oh yeah, back in the day, yeah, U's, yeah. Dog. For, in behavior yeah, and all this yeah. was uh because uh, she just happened Needs to improvement. The ends, <laughs> oh yeah, the the end wasn't as bad as the U though. No, right? yeah, no, the U's the lowest. Man. <laughs> the U's means, the worst. Yeah, it means you suck. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you for underground. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically, the, the teacher um just happened to know somebody who was related to uh a, the judge that was involved in the case against my dad holy shit damn uh, like that yeah it gets way deeper than being just a marijuana smuggler man um but basically uh, a teacher who was giving me f's as a little kid because well well not because of anything i did but yeah. just because of there was like a she's a she, bitch you know, biased against the yeah. family or whatever. A vendetta and shit. Yeah, and um, and that tripped my grandma out because I mean I was a little kid. Yeah. So she realized that um, I was probably gonna have to deal with a bunch of that shit growing up. You know what I mean? And so, so in order to curtail that whole thing, they went ahead and just officially adopted us. So now gave you some structure a little bit. Yeah, for sure, dude. So so now my name is uh, on my driver's license, which is my name, Jamil Alexander Nichols. Nichols. Yeah. All right. Whose name is that? Is that your grandfather? That's, that's my that's my grandfather's name. Okay. The, the 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 white. Yeah. My grandma's Mexican. Nichols. Yeah. Because yeah, I've seen that name. On yeah. Your shit so somewhere. so you know that's where so that's how come my name is Nichols. Yeah, adopted. Right? But but at the same time it wasn't like they were adopting us to 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 take us away from our um, like what who we were or anything no, like that. No, no, so no. I'm still. Jamil Alexander Chagra. I just throw on nickels at you know Jamil Alexander Chagra. When you're nickels. little like that, I mean, you gotta try to protect it was the, you. It was from the it was, it was the weirdest thing though, having all of a sudden not write Chagra and like practice writing nickels as my last name because I mean oh, I was just shit. I just learned how to write. Yeah, yeah, and it was just like a big like that's. I just thing. learned the Chagra shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I go this nickel <laughs> shit. I don't know how to do the H. <laughs> I mean, H no, but it was, just, it was just it was just it was just such an, an odd thing. Like think about having to write. You've been writing your name for yeah, your whole life. It is. Weird. Think about having to all of a sudden write not your name, but all the wires out there. We've been going to the shit since <laughs> I've been married, motherfucker. <laughs> don't give me, don't give me uh, that shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, uh, so, so they made it official, man. So, so uh, my grandma, and my grandfather were uh, well. They are my mom, my mom, and my dad. You yeah, know? I, mean, I call that, my grandma mom because that's what she was to me. You know. Yeah. So, so I try to always look at it in a positive way, and instead yeah. of trying to be like, uh, you know, my parents went in prison and this and that, and my grandparents had to take us in. Like I always just kind of say, like, you know, I had two sets of parents. Yeah, that works. That's where that's a. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's either that, or, it's either that, or, or, or like you know, be pissed off the whole time. Nah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just you know, it's just you, know, you ain't got no time for that. Yeah, you know what I mean? gotta keep it moving. Oh yeah, man. So what's up with that teacher, man? You don't know. Uh, you didn't make. You didn't <laughs> dude, make peace even, with her, dude. I don't even remember her. I don't even remember her name, man. All I know is my grandma had me switched out to another class, and then that's when the whole uh, adoption thing started to happen. All right. Oh, they had you switched. That's good. Ooh, yeah, dude. I, no, I can relate, man. Like a lot of the stuff, you not to that level. But yeah, definitely my parents were on some shit. But yeah, just the teacher part. I grew up in the hood, so man, just a lot of racist ass teachers. And they look at you like trash. And then the the parents, you know, if they're hardcore Mexican, they just let the teachers do whatever because they don't want to. Like, they can barely speak English. But, but in my family, <laughs> they, don't, they don't want no issues. Of their yeah, own. but see, I don't. My family wasn't like that. We're educated to a degree, like not like formally, but we're always all of us are super smart and shit. And in a sense, still, still, still street trash and shit. But you know. We're intelligent, but we wouldn't put up with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, neither would my grandma. Uh, but we had a couple of teachers that were racist motherfuckers. Like, if you had to go to the restroom, they wouldn't let you go and shit like that. My boy pissed his pants, dog. Because they wouldn't let him go. <laughs> like, and the wow. bitch, she would say shit. Like, she, they didn't care. They would just fucking 
fucking bust your balls hard, man. And yeah. it's like, damn, I'm fucking eight years old, bitch. God damn. They're, they're, they're it's on, that 80s shit. They're on teacher power trips. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it still happens, but not as much because yeah. we'll pop out the phone on their ass and record them. But back then, we didn't have that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we and especially if you're Mexican, it's like, they, they take advantage, bro. <laughs> Take, but like with our family, they couldn't because we spoke English and like yeah. we knew our shit. It was like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, I mean, it was just that one issue with that one teacher. And then after that, yeah. it, it was always, it was weird. Like I could always because of the connection to yeah. your dad and all that. But um, but even like beyond that teacher, like, uh, like I guess all went to school, man. Like I could always tell whether the teacher knew or not. Based well, I mean, on what, based on the way they would just kind of like look at me or even they would never say nothing. You know what I mean? But I could always just kind of tell. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, that was it was, it was, it, 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 was it was a big deal. It was it a was big a deal back then. You know what I mean, I mean it was it was a big deal. It was a huge the, deal. You know what went down, but yeah. uh, so I don't know, man. Like I said, every once in a while, someone finds a reason to kind of bring it up. And, and yeah, my uh, homie's a teacher, man, and he's one of the good ones. Teacher of the year over here. Yeah, my homie Eddie. Nice. Uh, yeah, he's he actually gives a fuck. He'll take his equipment in there because he's a hip hop head. And, like he'll let them like he'll, he, they have to write poetry, but he'll record them. He'll make Dude. a beat because he makes beats, and like, he actually interacts with motherfuckers. Dude, like that's such a that's such such a cool yeah. way to teach uh, English. Yeah, man. so and he knows his shit, but he's also you know he's also a hip hop head, so he kind of uses both worlds, and, you know, melds them together and shit. That's, that's one tight. of the good ones. That's, that's tight. And he's a basketball coach, and shit. <laughs> so he's been on the show too a couple times. Shit. All right, man. So what else we want to talk about next? So I know. You were telling me about the story kind of your mom being in prison also. Yeah. There was kind of a difference between like the, the way it happened, the timeline with uh, who got tried first and whatnot. Can you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah. Um, so, you know, my dad ends up getting into all kinds of shit and um, he ends up getting uh, popped and they charge him with all these drug charges. And so he's in, he's already, he's already locked up. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, uh, well, like I, I guess we're forgetting like a big piece of the whole story. I see. Which is but the story, but the piece of the story. Uh, um, if you can. So my dad is, uh, you know, doing his thing and bringing in as much weed as he can and just trying to make as much money as he can. And and um, in the process of that, of course, people start taking notice. And uh, one of the people that started taking notice was a judge. Um, I think I, he was actually out of Midland, bro. This judge. Oh, for real. My my dad never stepped foot in Midland. Fucking Midland, uh, But because one of my anybody... one of my dad's planes flew over Midland airspace, it gave this judge jurisdiction to, like, to I guess, one. to put himself as the judge in this trial. Basically, there was he he developed a personal, uh, I guess, hatred, I guess, for my family because of my uncle, though, oh, because shit. my own. My uncle was a criminal defense attorney, and he just happened to be, for the most part, representing high-profile drug criminals. Oh, so they targeted and, um, him. And he was such a good attorney that he was getting all his clients off. Yeah. And he was basically outsmarting and outlawyering this judge, you know, in front of in front of the whole courtroom, and getting people who this judge wanted to put in prison for life. Uh, he was getting him off. I mean, this judge, his nickname was Maximum John. Oh, he he no. like took pride in that Over nickname. Over some weed, especially. he took pride in that nickname, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of he course. would get, if you if you went before him and you were, uh, um, you know convi- uh, charged with a drug crime and were found guilty, he was gonna give you the maximum sentence he could, and yeah. that's just what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, my my uncle would get the better of him for the most part, and um, so my uncle ends up getting set up to be robbed and murdered in his law office yep. and so he's uh, you know he's not there anymore and then the judge sets his radar on the uh, you know the next chagra name that comes in front of him which happened to be my dad oh so sure. so he was gonna he he was gonna throw my dad in prison for 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 life and that's just what it was you know what i mean yeah so my dad tried to do what he can to not you know he tried to bribe the judge uh, offered him like an insane amount of money for being 1979 or yeah. 1978. I think it was like 10 million or something. Damn, and the, the, that's the, the equivalent of 100 million or something. <laughs> did that? No, did, so the, my dad said that the, the he didn't even that the judge didn't even think twice. He, he just said no, like you know, no. Just he he wasn't he wasn't going to be satisfied until he threw a a, a, Chagra, a member of the Chagra family in prison. Yeah. And uh, so you know, my since my dad was wrapped up in all that, uh, that's who he went after. And um, 
So my dad was accused of masterminding the assassination of this judge who ended up being uh, assassinated. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my mom got wrapped up in it. And whether uh, it's, you know, there's all kinds of uh, opinions about it and perspectives about it. But um, my mom didn't do shit, man. Yeah. My mom didn't they do just, shit. She didn't deserve to be They just prison. wanted to I mean, she bring did. everybody down just to be. Yeah. And, and see, they already, had, they already had my dad. So. <clears throat> yeah, you're good. Like, what the fuck? I mean, they just, you know, it's yeah. just so. I want to make an example and just ruin some lives and shit. Yeah, pretty much. Well, they they took it personal. Yeah, it and personal. I could and I could see how 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 they. Yeah, I mean you know I it's mean, somebody when got they, assassinated. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, so I can understand that. And yeah, I, but to I yeah, I can see both to go sides. after like my mom, man. It's just yeah, it just wasn't my because my dad was actually found not guilty of the whole thing. Yeah, and uh, my mom wasn't. So they they tried my mom. A couple years, I think maybe a year or so before they tried my dad, and they tried my mom at this in the same trial along with the dude who was accused of being the uh, the guy the trigger man. Who, well, I'm sure the judge had a bunch of enemies too. I mean, dude, come on now, he's, every he's person, trying to every, put everybody. Every person who went to prison because yeah, because so of him like, was, it could have been anybody, anybody really. Yeah, you know? But uh, the, the timing and all that. Yeah, and, and, you and know. plus he had a grudge against your yeah. uncles and shit. So, yeah. so somebody had to catch get the blame for that. Shit. Yeah, and. Uh, Iron. Well, another weird little twist on the story is uh, the the accused trigger man is uh, Charles Harrelson, who happens to be Woody Harrelson, the actor's dad. His dad. Yeah. yeah. His dad was a his dad was a I guess a a legit hitman. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, but that's what he was. Fun fact. <laughs> Hey, that's crazy, dog. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I didn't know that part until I Wikipedia it. Dude, it was, it's it's crazy, man. That's super crazy, dog. It's there, there's lots of. Uh, Really interesting characters and and names of, uh, you know, yeah. who had a little part in the story. You know Some I mean? real life shit, man. Yeah. So then again, so you're so, unfortunately so your my, mother has to yeah, so, catch heat for this shit. Yeah, you know they they start uh, pinching everybody they can for whatever they could, trying to get everybody to just uh, you know flip on my dad. And, yeah, of course. And um, my mom wasn't gonna do it. You know what I mean? Because she didn't do anything wrong, and she was like, I didn't do nothing wrong. So I don't see how I'm gonna end up when you know going to prison. But but yeah. then when her ver her her the verdict came back as guilty, you know at that at that point it's just kind of like what you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I mean it, it was just a real shitty situation. And then and then after that when they do try my dad, he gets found not guilty. Yeah, that's, that's so. The I mean, part. that 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 I just couldn't. I still first, to this day yeah. can't comprehend how that was able to just be like. If this like guy's they just not guilty, the, yeah, like, anybody. Her, her charge is uh, conspiring with my dad, who, who masterminded, who masterminded this thing when he was found not guilty, which means he did not do it. If you, if, so if you're if, conspiring with a non-guilty person, you're not guilty. Exactly. You go, you know, but, but that's not the way. These fuckers got a lot of power, so. And then they spent a whole lot of money, and, and they had to have a Chagra name in prison, yeah. and it ended up being uh, my, you know, my mom. My dad still did, you know, hard, hard time, but he wasn't in prison for the assassination of the of the of the judge. He was acquitted oh, on that the, charge. He was in prison for drug, drugs and yeah, you know, uh, it was just weed, right? Just weed, man. Hey. That's crazy to think that now it's being legalized everywhere. That I they're over here trying dude, to take his he, life dude, away. He, he was just like ahead of the game, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, he just back then. I mean, they viewed it differently. I mean, it's all politics, man. Of course, it's all it's day. all money. I mean, he, he could have you could replace marijuana with with let's just say anything illegal. Yeah. The the what they what they saw was a, a dude with a lot of money, and they weren't getting their cut in taxes. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's exactly. all it comes down, that's what it comes down to. You yeah. know what I mean? And then my dad was also flashing his money around in Vegas and being a big shot because, uh, yeah, well, they you don't know, like, they all, don't like that. They yeah, don't they like, they don't hate like that. that, you know, and, they and, hate that shit. Uh, you know, but with all that money, it, it changes people, man. And, and not that I would know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I definitely, I'm, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I for sure don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew now, nah, nah, but, uh, you know, having that I much get money, excited over my income tax did, uh, shit, having that much money, man, it would like, change you bro oh yeah I it's imagine, like uh, i remember my dad used to always say that um you know you don't know what how life gets and how or how how crazy shit gets when until you're up to your chin and millions of dollars and 
everybody that you know is trying to get some. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta like, you know, figure out who's who's there for Yeah, you who's know. on your side. Yeah. Who's, and which then, is uh, nobody probably exactly <laughs> and and then it sucks to realize that when it comes down to even family that it's it's yeah. really, it really isn't like nobody, you know what I mean? A lot of times. Very true. So can you still uh are you are you cool to talk about your mom still? I know she ended up getting sick at some point, right? Yeah. How many years was she in there? Dude, so my mom did about like, you know, 14, 15 years. Holy shit. She uh like when when you get sent, um the way I was explained it to it, the way they explained it to me was uh, you know, she got a thirty year sentence, right? Yeah. And the your you fed time, you you have you're like mandated to do a third of that. Okay. So she was up for parole after 10 years and she would get like, uh, and basically even in the, even in the prisons, like the guards and the warden and they all loved her. You know what I mean? She was a good person. And so they would write, uh, letters to parole boards and recommend her for, pro- recommend for her for, for parole. Yeah. And it would go all the way to the top to where it would just need like, you know, a stamp of approval and mm-hmm. she, she would have been out and they would always kill it like at the top. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh. So she would get a, you know, up for parole after every year, and you know, get almost out, yeah. and then they just wouldn't let her. You know what I mean? So she ended up doing sixteen. Somebody like, high up was like, nah. You know, because of the because of the official whole... like her official crime and her, um, well, you know, what she was charged with. But uh, so she and every every person in my family has gotten cancer, bro. Damn, for real. Like everybody. Everybody, sure. uh, it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird, man. But so, um, so my mom ended up getting cancer in prison, dude, and and I mean, I just assumed at that time that they, that she was getting the uh, medical care that she needed because I just figured yeah. that that's what they yeah, had so, to do. Yeah. But now that I think about it, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, you think that? I mean, I'm sure they're not spending I mean, all this money to keep a, a federal yeah. prisoner. It's gonna be the minimums. Yeah, and shit. you know what I'm saying. And I never really get thought about that. Well, Maybe I shouldn't. Sure. No, <laughs> but um, but you know, it's just it just sucks, man. Because uh, she had so after you after you go up for parole and all that, and you you ex- like there there comes a point where they they gotta let you out. I think it's after your well, and I and don't I don't know the exact yeah numbers and all that. But all I know is that my mom was like, they can't keep me in here no more than you know, and in another year. She would. They would have been forced to let her out. Like okay. she would have. They would have had to let her out in a year, and um, before that year can come up, and I'm, I mean, I'm talking like eight months before that, she passed away, man. Damn. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was a pretty heavy time it's in my a life. Tough time. Yeah. You were still visiting her at, at that point. Still going out. Yeah, I was. Se- I was. Se- I was seventeen, bro. Damn. It's like already like. I was seventeen. I was old enough to where it. it you I know was just what's old going enough on. to let it. Mess me like up, affect you. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean. Because when you're younger, old, it's like yeah. it fucks you, but you're like resilient when you're young. I was, I was the older just you get, enough, you understand more. You understand, but, but you don't. You under, you understand that you just will never understand. Yeah, and that just, it just, you know, one of those things. You know? Yeah, that's sure. I can never imagine that shit. Yeah, it was, it's, it was uh, some tough times. Yeah, some rough times. Yeah, definitely, man. And then just and then just having just knowing of the the why she was in there and all that just uh yeah. it just added it was like the fact that it, it was, was like in, insult on even, top yeah. of injury uh, in the worst yeah. sense of the word you know what I mean the world's a crazy place man. yeah dude for sure so all right well shit a lot of deep shit a lot of heavy shit it's a little bit different episode than what we're used to <laughs> I might I think I might even just release it like a normal episode because of the way it went down uh you know it was a good feeling it was a good vibe. Some deep shit, you know. That people can take different things from it. There's yeah. different lessons and, and, uh, to be learned from it. You know, from from what started this whole conversation, yeah. that thing that came out on on TV or whatever. Um, those guys that wrote the book, uh, Foley's Cove, or um, you know, basically the guys that were involved with my dad in, in that first big one. Uh-huh. They like to make some assumptions that my dad was crazy or that. Um, you know, he would. This guy calls him a snake, or says that he's oh, not even know. worth. But you know, it's just funny because those guys are just talking. They're talking shit about somebody who was like their boss. They saw the way I see it, man. Is they make it seem like it was a uh, like he had like he wasn't a big factor in the whole thing. Oh, okay. But uh, 
they just trying to downplay the, those yeah, man, shit. Uh, you know, you know oh, fuck I've, it, dude. I'm just gonna call it like it is and say what it was. These dudes were just the high, like his his hired help to unload the boats and and get all the logistics done. But it was it was it was definitely not their operation the way they make it seem like in the book. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right, right. Uh, you know, I, I figure I feel like uh, they just saw their opportunity to uh, make a little dough, and and I can't hate, hate on no one yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, my dad was in no way crazy. He might have been. Not he 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 might have been one of those dudes who was uh, not scared of anything and because of that did crazy shit. But he was not. He but if anything, he was one of the most intellectual dudes I ever met. I mean, I used to just sit down and talk with him and uh, just listen to the stories he would tell because, I mean, well, they were fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about like some like sh- like movie shit. movie shit, like literally some movie shit. And uh, yeah. you know, it's just uh, the way they portray him. Is always he's always gonna be the bad guy. Yeah, he's always gonna be the bad guy in this in this story. Whether uh, you think we should, is bad or good, or should be legal, illegal. Whether you like the judge, didn't like the judge. I mean, at the end of the day, he he has well, in history. There's no choice. He's gonna go down as like the bad guy. Well, but, I mean, depending who you ask. Though, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I mean, in, but to people, but if, like officially people, to in, like in the books, he's like the in the mainstream version yeah, of the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but he was he was. He was a he was a smart man, and he just uh, you know took the chances that he took because no one else was doing it, and he saw the opportunity. But but these guys, it's America, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, these guys coming off saying he was crazy, and and it's just it just kind of bothers me, man, because yeah. like you know they'll they'll say that shit, but yet they won't say that shit around. They're just like really fake, man. Like they'll see me they're, and, these and they'll tell are me. Older though, right? Yeah, they're they're old. They're older than us. They're. Old. I mean, I was just, I was like three or four years old when when my dad and mom went to prison. Um, you know, so yeah, definitely they're older. But you know, I just think it's so. It's just they're just fake, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. One day, the world's uh, full of them. That's for sure. Yeah, they're definitely uh, just like everyone else. Yeah. You know. So, but yeah, dude, it's not like how they say it. Shit, I don't even want to. I'm like, well, I'll ask you off air, off air. Like we're on, we're not even on it. <laughs> but I'll ask you after. But like, I don't even want to know. I don't want to promote any of that shit. That's the thing. Um, but there is a book out there. But I'm not trying to there's, promote there, it. There's there's multiple books is out there. there. I mean, I, well, there's like the one that you mentioned earlier. Well, my I mean, sister wrote a book. I mean, my, really? my my sister wrote a book. And my my sister wrote a book. Uh, Talk about that one. Okay, so she. Uh, this is actually not my my uh, my dad was married. To a, a woman before my, my mom, okay. so he had a he had two uh, his first wife, and with his first wife, um, he had three daughters. So I actually have, I actually have five sisters, um, th- uh, one biological sister, and then f- four half sisters. Um, you still so, talk to everybody or no? Well, we don't keep in contact. I got a bunch well, of those too. Um, <laughs> you know, I stayed in contact with with uh, with one of my sisters more than the other ones. I guess that's just it. Just kind of happened that way. Um, my sister Kathy and she lived in the city that was closest to the prison that my dad was in. Okay. So she's the one that kind of like stuck by my dad and would go visit him every weekend and you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she, I would say she had the strongest, uh, bond to my father of, uh, any of the, of any of the, the daughters. All right. And then, um, so she wrote a book, man. So she wrote a book called Dirty Darlings, kind of like a playoff of, uh, another book that was written. You know, yeah, and um, telling her, you know, just uh, how it was for her growing up, and so you got to remember though, she's older than me. So she, during uh, they, during when times yeah. were good, uh, she was like they around. Had, they ten, had everything. Ten, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, she, she she was like um, I don't know anything about. She the, had all the toys, all the latest toys, yeah, all that you know. Yeah, and um, so so she, but then that also leads to uh, you know b- bad shit also having everything you want when oh, you're a yeah. kid is just it's so so she gets into like her, her partying and all this shit and, mm. and just it's it's a really interesting book man Dirt, the Dirty Darlings I highly recommend yeah, it well, all right, it's all right, if sure. anything a more true account of uh, the way things went down and also she had recordings of um, her mom was gonna write a book before she passed away back in the day yeah. so she was recording conversations that she was having with my dad oh, at, sure. in the prison visiting room for the book you know what I mean Yeah. so she has like actual um, like ex- excerpts from those recordings in there that's so, dope so you know it's it's more the real story of all the written versions of it out yeah. there you know what I mean well I mean shit that's a crazy story all in all just in general it's 
it's been a wild ride. Obviously, nobody can exactly yeah. feel what you feel, you, all the siblings in general, and uh, anybody else involved, the, the close family. But just hearing it from, even just from my perspective, just you know, hearing the details, because anybody can Google it, and uh, you know, they're gonna get the general, the the the, the high level you know, version of it. They're gonna get all the negative, brother. Yeah, and then the negative mostly. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's why, again, that's how, the other reason I wanted to do this as well is just to give you an opportunity to kind of I mean, tell I mean, the other uh, side of it. You know, it's like, um, I know people who have come up to me and told me that my dad actually s- saved a bunch of lives because this, I mean, this judge was like not a normal dude, man. You know what I mean? He was like going above and beyond his, his, uh, he abused his up his his power as a judge to literally keep maintain his nickname as Maximum jo- uh, John or whatever you oh, know wow. what I mean. Yeah, he, uh, he was a, he was a bad dude, man. He was like a bad dude, is and putting people in prison for ridiculous amounts of time for for you know yeah. not ridiculous. Yeah, they they things. still exist. Those, yeah, those yeah. types of judges. Yeah, for sure. Man. There's good ones and bad ones, but we'll say this. I mean, at the end of the day, listeners. I mean, I make my comments because you know. Jimmy's a, a casual homie of mine. I want to make my comments. So I'm probably a little bit biased, but at the same time, I'm also going to say, as I even I do, I'm going to do my own research. You do your own research, listeners. Again, yeah. we're just we're just recording and uh, I, like, and recounting you know, exactly. one uh, like, Jimmy's aspect. And I just thought it'd be this is, interesting. This is this is my point of view, yeah. and this is uh, coming from you know the the time that I shared with my with my dad and my mom and uh, everyone else who's involved. And so, of course, I'm going to be biased. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, if, yeah, of course. So, uh, you know, don't nobody go start getting all crazy about what I'm saying. I'm saying it because it's what I experienced and what I live. Just listen to this shit for what it's worth, but also if you're interested in the story just for whatever reason, you know, the, the, we, we got the internet nowadays and you do yep. your, we got the Dirty Darlings and every any other book. We're not going to promote the other ones, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, just being it and, and you'll find them. Uh, yep. So with that said, any... Anything else we want to talk about? Anything else we want to cover? Any final words? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we kind of, we already covered a lot, huh? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, we covered a lot, but yeah, we barely even scratched the How's, surface. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 I mean, we barely, this is, we're setting up part two right I now. Mean, we got, mean, this dude, is the teaser. Dude, we barely, it just gets so uh, intricately cr- crazy, man. Give me one example of that. Uh. Just one okay. example, we'll, we'll cap it off. So, the my dad's attorney, Oscar Goodman, who was like known for being a, like a mob lawyer, like the way my uncle was known for being a drug lawyer. Yeah. Um, he represented a bunch of big name officers. Uh, you know, gets my dad acquitted. He just recently was the he the mayor of Las Vegas, man. Oh, sure. And and then he ex, he like expired the number of terms he could be uh, elected. They, <laughs> but they love him so much in Las Vegas that he, now they he made has, a new rule. No, no, no. Now now he has his wife being the mayor. Like oh, she she man. runs <laughs> and and, 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 and it's, it's a family like, affair. It's like a run, it's like a running joke. Like oh, like Mrs. Goodman, the mayor, and and Miss, I mean it's just, everyone knows that he's. You know, know he's, yeah, it's, sure. just, it's just uh, there's just a lot of really crazy, uh, car- interesting stories characters. inside of stories, stories inside, inside of stories, stories inside, of, inside of stories. I mean, listening to my, to my, the stories my dad would tell, yeah. the stories my mom would tell. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy because everyone tells stories and everyone always hypes up their stories to have them be more than what they are. Yeah, of course. But my mom and dad didn't. Yeah, that was. I mean, you, you, you yeah, shit. you know what I mean, and and so it's just crazy, man. It was just oh, yeah, surreal, oh, yeah. uh, surreal. Well, anything else that comes in your mind, anything else, any of the details you may have missed, man, you're more than welcome to jump on the show again. Hey, dude, I, I think I we got a really some nice meaty yeah. material. Dude, we could we we, 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 we got we, to vent a little, we got to like, share stories, we got to entertain, like we a, got to bond a I little. I feel like we uh, this was like a therapy session, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. A little bit of therapy, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of yeah. everything. Dude, I love you know it, what I'm dog. saying? So we'll uh, cap it off with this again. Once again, thank you listeners. Keep supporting, keep buying the shirts. Keep uh, spreading the word. Sweet Jesus Radio. With that said, this is Sweet Jesus Radio. Thank you for playing. Sweet Jesus Radio.